What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bolero. Sam here with Gab and Maui. What's up guys? So na ba kayo manood ng basketball? Ng UAAP basketball? <laughs> Never! Never. Never. Yan. Never. Yan ang gusto kong marinig sa inyo. Kahit Kasi ano, kahit ball is life. Kahit last side <laughs> na lang basketball the past few weeks, di ba? Oo nga, <laughs> grabe. And <laughs> today, life. today, basketball is life. But today, we're going to talk about a special topic, a uh, trending topic. Of course, one of our friends, si Navs, posted about this, talked about this, interviewed the guy. Watch that interview, by the way, on his YouTube channel. We're going to talk to talk about Alex Konov, one of the Phil foreign players na eligible, I think, for season 87. People are very hyped for him. Um, he hasn't committed yet or he hasn't even decided if he's going to play in the Philippines or for a UAAP team. But that's the question that we're going to ask today. Where, w- uh, where should Alex, if ever he does decide to go to the Philippines and play f- in the UAAP, where should Alex Konov go? Yan ang sasagutin natin today. But before we talk about that, let's first ask, sino ba tong si Alex Konov? Who is Alex Konov? How does he play? What's his play style? What's his background? Maui, I think you read about Alex Konov and did some um, research on Alex Konov. Tell us a, a little deep, a bit deep more. Dive. A deep dive. A deep dive. A deep dive. Hindi, hindi naman, hindi naman as deep a dive. Hindi so naman, we look, hindi naman. We look not YouTube, around, YouTube we look lang. Not, yeah, we look at available videos. Uh, this is also based on my understanding of Alex Konov's game when I watched him with on the under-16 team with sila Baila, with sila Jared Bahay, Jay Mahmood, and the likes. Uh Alex Konov is basically a knockdown shooter. Uh, I think if you look at even your Instagram page, niya, you can see the highlights. Niya. A ton of it is because of his outside shooting. Uh, one of the things that I'm not sure is what position he will play here in the Philippines. Uh, he looks like a power forward, uh, a pure power forward, but he doesn't rebound that well. Uh, if you look at the stats of nung, nung FIBA under 16 with sila Jared Bahay, he had uh, he only averaged around three rebounds a game in 25 minutes of action. Uh, I don't know if Sila Mahmoud uh, rebounded the ball better or maybe he just didn't uh, get those rebounding opportunities. But but this guy looks like uh, an offensive threat, uh, probably similar to, to our friend Mason Amos. Uh, I think it's one of the reasons why he also did pretty well playing with Jared Bahai. We all know that Bahai had... Uh, the best time of Mason Amos' FIBA career was with Jared Bahay. And, and they have very, very, uh, a ton of similarities, especially with their outside shooting. Uh, I think that this guy is should be playing for a, probably a Division Two or Division One team in the USA. It is surprising to see that si Naveen broke this news. Uh, it, I think even if you watch yung, ano niya, yung interview niya with Alex Konov, uh, they were talking about his, his possibilities of playing abroad and his dream of making it to, making it to the NBA. Uh, it's a bit surprising that he's now available. Uh, I think he's now open to playing the UAAP. Some of the teams that are interested, uh, as Naveen reported, is UP, Ateneo, FPU, and uh, LaSalle. So these LaSalle. four teams are vying for Alex Konov services. And uh, I, I this is why we're having this episode. I think this guy is a plug-and-play player. You can put him in any team. He's a knockdown shooter. He probably has to bulk up if he's, if he's going to play power forward. My hope is he develops his playmaking and he becomes a wing player. This guy is potentially potentially could be part of the future of Philippine basketball. He's 6'7". He's very thin. Uh, he has very good outside shooting. I think he has to, to work on his game a lot, similar to Mason. If they want to convert to the small forward slot, uh, but this, the sky's the limit as, as far as potential for this guy. And there's a reason why when you search YouTube, you see this guy in most of the videos hyping up the future of Philippine basketball. So, yeah. Any other comments, guys? Wala nang paligoy ligoy pa. Gab. All right. So, I will answer the question first. Where should Alex Where, Konov by, go? 
by the way, ano nga ba yung how do you pronounce his last name? Konov, Konov. Sorry, Alex Konov. If we butchered your name, um, from, apologies. From the interview with Navs, it seems like it's Konov. 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 Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so it's where should Alex Konov go? I will mm-hmm. first be saying that he should not go to uh, the other three, the most of the schools that were said to be interested in him, which is Ateneo, La Salle, and UP. Uh, I now obviously how I'm dare not you, Gab? Go with Ateneo. Ka, diba? Dapat Ateneo yeah. yung mo. Just, just being real, man. I. Uh, from what Maui said, I don't think he can play as a wing yet here in the Philippines. From the videos that I've watched, his handle is not as tight. And if he's playing as a wing, he's going to get eaten alive by the smaller players here if, if he can't handle the ball. But si KQ pa nga, he still gets eaten alive sometimes diba? by UP's uh, sm- smaller guards because his handle is not as, it's not as, it's not as tight. So if you don't have a tight handle, a very good handle, you're, you're going to turn the ball over a lot. Uh, Smaller guards are going to pick on you and, and pressure you to turn the ball over. So I don't think the wing yet is open for him. So with that being said, he has to play power forward. And 6-7 with, with a great shooting stroke, Ateneo already has one. <laughs> yeah, they have Mason Amos. Why would they need an Alex Kono? Right? It's an overlap. Uh, and it's very much an overlap in skills. Now, uh, Athenians can argue na, hey, 6 7, he can play a big man. I don't think he can play center. I just don't, I, I, I don't think so. If, if, he, if he's going to play center, we're going to get pummeled inside, I think. Uh, I mean, very physical here in the Philippines. He, does, he, he looks like he has to get a bit of uh, muscle on him before he can even think about playing center. So I don't think that's going to be the spot for him. So yeah, I don't think Ateneo is the right spot for him, despite. As the interview with Navs, which was around a month ago, despite Co- Coach Tab being one of the first to reach out to him, right? he mentioned that, that he's had a few Zoom calls already with Coach Tab about the possibility of playing in the Philippines and specifically for Ateneo. But I don't think Ateneo is the right spot for him. Um, we need a center, uh, a center who can produce right now. A, a, a big, who's re- yeah, a bruiser who's ready to produce. Right away, if we want to compete for season 87. And yeah, Mason A was there. And one year, alang ang difference between their eligible years. So I think you'd want to give Mason a bit more uh, playing time than have that, rather than getting another player who can duplicate the skills. Diba? So no, I don't think Ateneo. LaSalle, definitely not. LaSalle has too many front court players. They have a loaded front court. He's not going to get any minutes in that loaded front court. Plus, they have Luis Pablo coming season 88. Pa. So, yeah. uh, no way. No way for, for Alex Kono. They're too tight a, a rotation, a front court rotation to go. And same thing with UP. UP has a, not, not just a tight front court rotation, UP has a tight rotation period. <laughs> All of the positions are stacked in UP. So, I. I know he's friends with Jacob Baila. They've, they've been teammates before. But I don't think UP... Uh, if he goes to UP, he'll play what, what? Spare minutes. Same as Chico Briones. Five to, five to eight minutes a game, max. Because all of the all of the rotation pieces there are set already, I, I, I believe. I don't think anyone is going to crack a 20-minute a night role for the UP Fighting Maroons. They have a set rotation. With that being said... Uh, my favorite is actually not FEU, despite me saying that that the three are n- not supposed to be where he goes. My favorite is actually the Yellow School, the UST Growling Tigers. I don't know, guys, if you caught this, but he's also a very good friends with Zayn Mahmood. Zayn and Zayn Mahmood, Mahmood yeah. has been re- he trash has been talks recruiting with the Zayn guy. Mahmood. Yeah, yeah, and he's been recruiting the guy to come to UST. And, this is all coming from Nav's interview, by the way. So shout out yeah, to Nav's. Yeah. Shout out to Nav's. Asking very good questions, by the way, Nav's. Thank you. Uh, look at USC's lineup right now. They're very thin on front court players. Very. Mukhang hindi na mga 6 4 ang type ni Coach Pido. Mukhang mga 6 7, 6 6 na yung mga type niya. Kasi puro garon yung front court niya. And I think he fits in perfectly to give space to the to the likes of guards like uh Forsy Patrigao, Nick Cabanero, 
uh, to a fellow shooter like Isaac Dan- Danting, to Kyle Paranada, he, c- he can be a stretch four. Um, he, c- he can play in the starting five right ahead of Christian Manaitai. And when, when you need a scoring punch in the paint, you put in a, a, a Christian Manaitai. So I think he fits in perfectly there. If you need him to play with Zayn Mahmood, he can give space to Zayn Mahmood to operate inside. You could give space for Fortsky and Tungkala to work that pick and roll game. Uh, you could give space for Nick Cabanero to, to go one-on-one. Uh, I think from the interview of Mavs, he shot 39% from three in the high school level. Uh, that, that, that's pretty good. So I think that's pretty translatable. That's a pretty tra- translatable skill. Shooting is something that every team always needs, especially in this current age of basketball. And I think if you put him in UST, he's going to get a ton of minutes. Um, USC doesn't have a ton of depth in that front court. And uh, you get to play for a rising program. Uh, we just talked about, we're going to talk about UST in our next episode about how they look impressive in their first two games in Phil Oil. And it just seems like it's a perfect spot for him if he wants minutes and if he wants to win. Right? Plus, of course, the education. USC is one of the top four schools in the country. It's now it's one of the top basketball pro programs in the history of the UAAP. Not in recent years, but in the history of the UAAP. So I think you get everything in USD. You have a close friend there in Zayn Mahmood. You get to play with him. And you get to play for a coach who's beloved by players. Coach Pido, despite his flaws in uh, tactics or whatnot, he's always been a player's coach. Play, uh, the, the players have always loved playing for Pido. And in general, uh, the whole USD community loves Pido. So uh, you get to play for a guy like that, and you get to play for a fan base that's hungry to win. Yeah, that's that's, that's hungry a point. to even make a, a, a dent in yeah. the basketball scene in the UAAP. So, okay, Maui, go ahead. Yeah, tsaka, Coach Pido has molded a lot of shooters diba, and made a career out of them. Diba? That's one of the things exactly. uh, that's, that he can look forward to. My question is, is willing ba siya magpakalbo? <laughs> because that's a possibility when <laughs> you favor Coach Pido. Wala lang ang team kalbo eh! <laughs> diba? Malay mo, malay mo. If they start the season 0 and 3, malay mo, pakalbo sila agad, diba? Pakalbo that, that, lahat. That, oh, hindi natin alam. Oh, you know ang team kalbo. <laughs> that's a trademark of Coach Pido, diba? A sign of brotherhood, I think. Yeah. Okay. But, but oh, yeah, eh, you, I, I don't... Any comments? Any comments? Yeah. Sam, I would say, Gab, yeah, I would say USD is a, a very prime spot uh, for Kunov. Uh, I think mm-hmm. having mm-hmm. Zayn Mahmoud there is a plus. And uh, having a ton of playmakers, I think that's what to look for when you're a knockdown shooter, di ba? You have three very ball-dominant Good players. Point. You don't have to, to force anything. You just have to look for your spots, di ba? And he's gonna play, if he's gonna play as a stretch four, playing with four very good especially Cabanero and Padrigao, for two players who, who know how to, to, to get their teammates going, it's, a, it, it's probably one of the good places for him to consider. Uh, again, these, as, these are the four teams mentioned, but as we know, anything can happen. Tom. That's true. Anything can happen. Just to add, Gab, I think yung one of the advantages of UST uh, that the other three big schools that you mentioned also have is yung financial support. Because they're supported by the SMC group, you know, all the top players normally go to those teams. So it's good news for Alex Konov that SMC, SMC is supporting USD because he will still get some form of support. Alam naman natin lahat yan. Wag na tayong magkunwari pa, di ba? So I think that's... A bonus or a plus for the UST pick. I like that pick. One of my, actually, my one of my top picks also. Maui, ikaw naman. Um, where will Ale- where should Alex Konov go if he were to go yeah. to the UAAP? If I were to choose a team, uh, I would choose one of the four teams. I would have to agree with Gab. Ateneo should not pursue Konov because of Mason Amos. I think it, they're very replicable. Uh, I think Mason is better at this point in time also. So what's the point? 
Uh, for La Salle and UP, it's very self-explanatory. You have players like uh, Belmonte and Torpulas waiting for their time. And you cannot just out out uh, outplay them and get into the rotation easily when you go to UP. Same with La Salle, diba? We have players like Raven Cortez, Pablo Coming, Polycarpio plays some four. So it's going to be a very crowded front court. Uh, I, I envision him playing the four slot, uh, probably in the UAAP. But one of the teams that I would say is one of, from those four is FEU. We talked about how FEU has struggled shooting the ball uh, every year. Every single season since we started this podcast, Good point. Good shooting, point. shooting has been a problem with FEU. Exactly. Despite, having, despite having players like Cyrus Torres diba? and now Jorik Bautista, it's about time that FEU has multiple shooters, not just that shooter. Diba? A player like Kuno could be that guy. Uh, if he gets to FEU, he will get a lot of minutes right off the bat. I see him playing as the four with probably Cholo Nuevo and BJ Pre sometimes playing at the five. They have the luxury of having guards who are also tall and strong who can also help with the rebounding. Diba? It doesn't have to be him who will exclusively guard the big man. Maybe Cholo Nuevo has had experience playing with FSAs, playing with uh, other big men, can, can guard those positions. So I see, I just envision him really at FEU. FEU has historically also had that stretch for Arwin Santos and a ton of other big men who knew how to stretch the floor. Uh, usually when you have that player, when you have that four, four slot, whether it be VJ Pre or whether it be Kono, when you have that four slot who is great in FEU, you have a winning team. Diba? They used to have Cervantes, they used to have Gerard Jones, they used to have uh, Arwin Santos. Landing Gerard another... Jones! What a throwback! Grabe yung ano na yun, bag na yun. Talagang lalim ng bag na yun. Hindi na kilala yun. Hindi na kilala yun ng 18 to 25 viewers namin. Natin, I'm sure. Uh, but anytime USC has that versatile big man who can stretch the floor, it usually comes with success, diba? And I think that he, them having those two options, VJ Pre and Kunov, having that versatility to play those two guys on the post or on the perimeter and having a ball-dominant point guard like uh, Pasaol running the, the offense, it could be sky's the limit for Alex Kunov. So, and having a, a, a coach, Sean Chambers, who knows how the international game plays out, right? Because it's very prevalent. Uh, it's very prevalent. International ball is all about stretching the floor. Inter- international ball is all about having those big men who can stretch the floor, shoot it from the outside, basically have that versatility. So having that coach, having Sean Chambers, a guy who looks like he's very open, a guy who will also play the mostly, who will probably employ the triangle offense. Diba? We see a lot of players, a lot of power forwards who have that outside shooting thrive in the triangle offense. Diba? So I really see it as a good fit. What do you think, guys? Sam, Gab. That was actually my runner-up pick, Maui. It's FEU. Uh, because, well, because he, FEU was mentioned in the in the mm-hmm. announcement mm-hmm. by by Navs. I thought, now, out of these four, FEU is where you should go. Definitely. You talk about a team that needs desperately needs shooting. FEU desperately needs shooting. Tama si Maui. First, how many seasons now have we talked about FEU and their lack of consistent outside shooting? Watch how FEU plays now. Watch how much space they try to give si Pasaol and si Pre just to operate and and distribute the basketball. Alex Konov will definitely help there. And, mo, and much like USD, they don't have a lot of front court depth. Diba? Their back of big is Miguel Ona. <coughs> they're... they're Backup power forward is Aaron Baguno. You can easily slot in there. If you want minutes, FEU is prime for front court minutes. They don't have a ton, a ton of options there. Sammy. I love that pick. And I think FEU, Kono, Alex Konov doesn't have to play center, but they can still play small ball. Diba? FEU likes to play a lot of small ball and Alex Konov would be perfect for their, for sort of that they have um, the first lineup. Diba? Oh, oh, exactly. So I, I love that pick. I love that pick. But 
Um, and I love that pick because it's it's one of my top choices but not really my answer. So, ang ganda kasi we all ended up picking different teams and that's what I like about this conversation. Um, but definitely, UST and FU should be up there. Uh, my pick, my pick, actually I have two more teams pero I'm gonna go with um, the UE Red Warriors uh, for Alex Konov and um, let me explain why. Number one, we talked about his his strength, diba? It's three-point shooting. And a team, guess what? A team that loves three-point shooting, the UE Red Warriors. We've seen it um, the past few seasons. They just love to shoot the three. Um, actually, number two, the last time the UE Red Warriors and Coach Jack Santiago had a 6-7 uh, three-point shooting power forward, it was Luis Villegas, and he was a mythical oh, five player. Coach okay, Jack Santiago like knows how to use a 6 7 three point shooting power forward. So, if he wants to be a mythical five player and be developed into an amazing three point shooting power forward, Coach Jack Santiago is like a, probably a good coach for him. Um, and his play, um, the way he plays his team. They shoot a lot of threes. Number three, we mentioned, I think Maui mentioned, or Gab, um, he's not really a strong rebounder. That's why he's really perfect for the power forward role, diba? Um, Right now, in, at UE, they have one of the best or FSAs, uh, MVP contender in Precious Momoway. So, he doesn't have to worry about rebounding or defending the bigs of the other teams. Uh, he can. I'm pretty sure Precious Momo is going to play the entire game. So don't worry, Alex. You're gonna play power forward exclusively. <laughs> um, so he has a friend there who can rebound and just give him the ball when he's open for the three. Uh, other things that I thought were also very interesting. We Gab mentioned UST. I love that pick. But if we're talking about history, um history of being successful. I think UE is the winningest team in the UAAP. Uh, you talk about a uh, hungry fan base also. Um, I think the past few seasons, they've been growing, diba? Like, even the previous players like Sina Paul Lee have been attending the games just because they're hungry and excited to see the UE Red, the UE Red Warriors back in the, the, the playoffs. Um, and one last thing, I think for me, if I'm just the competitor inside of me. I think si Alex Konov is number 24, tama ba? 24 ata. Yeah, yes, eh. yes. So, mukhang Kobe fan to. So, kung Kobe fan to, <laughs> mamba mentality dapat. Oh, hindi, I don't wanna play with my friends. I wanna beat my friends. I don't wanna <laughs> play with Zayn Mahmood or Jacob Baila. I wanna beat them. And and from the interview with Nabs, he likes to trash talk with his friends, di ba? So, I'm going to the UE Red Warriors to prove na I can bring this team to a championship and I'm going to beat my my friends doing it. So, that's my pick, the UE Red Warriors. Anything you guys have to say? I love it, Sam, because uh, in his interview with Nabs, he was he was pointing that, yeah, his, his dream was to make it to the NBA and he was looking at uh, some Division One schools. He hadn't gotten much offers yet. But, yeah, he's he really wants to go pro. And I think if you want to cash in early, go pro. You have to perform immediately. Diba? Uh, I don't, and if you're going to UE, again, sabi mo asam, he doesn't have to worry about rebounding. He also doesn't have to worry about competition for minutes. Because honestly, who? who? Ronji Go? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who, wala. Who's, wala. E- Ethan Galang? Undersized no. <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> four. He can slot oh, in the three. Under... Siga lang. Yeah. 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 Wala. He has no competition for minutes in, in in UE. As we said earlier, in many weeks of, of this uh podcast already, UE is the land of opportunity. You go there, ton of opportunity, land ton of, of opportunity. minutes are available. <laughs> oh, <laughs> legit. I like that. I like that. Precious is always the only sure thing. So if you want a one and done season, diba? You is that place. A lot of people <laughs> stay there for one year. Then go to, to another place. Grabe ka naman. Oh, mga UB fans magagalit sa no, atin. No, but I think 
no, but I think, uh, joking aside, uh, I think it's also a byproduct of Coach Jack being able to understand how to integrate players easily in his system. Right? It's one of the reasons why they've continued, continued to surprise us despite losing a ton of players every season. And I want to say lang, Sam, you, you hit it right on the point, di ba? When it comes to utilizing a 6-7 potential power forward floor spacer, who else but uh, Coach Jack, di ba? They had Luis Villegas, di ba? And a ton of their wing players shoot three-pointers oh, up to the power forward set naman. They all shoot three- Even si Mama Wei, if you watch our, you know, if you watch our next episode, is starting to shoot three point, <laughs> three-pointers, yeah. Diba? Yeah. Imagine being the best three-point shooter on a team that encourages everyone to take a three-pointer. Diba? He's probably going to shoot 10 to 12 three-pointers a game. Diba? He'll just play the, the math game. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree. You hit it right on the point, the opportunity, the land of opportunity, uh, a coach who knows how to utilize a player like him. So yeah, very good. Oh, hey, that was that, I think that was fun because we all had our own picks. Uh, before we end this episode, I think the right answer, and Maui, you mentioned it at the very start. We do hope that Alex Konov can play in Div 1 or Div 2, you know, for his development also, or just to get the opportunity to play abroad, um, grow as a player, and represent the Philippines later on, diba? It doesn't, just because he doesn't go to the UAP doesn't mean no. he's not going to re- represent important. the Philippines. And and he wants to, I think, from his interviews then, it seems like he's interested. And it's not going to be a problem because he already played for the Philippines in the under-16. So, passport issues, not a problem for Alex. So, we're hoping for the best for Alex. Um, we want him to get the best opportunities where he can grow and develop. But if he goes to the UAAP, where should he go? Comment them down below. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode. It's going to be another back-to-back episode. See you again next time.